This is an impressive group because not only are you like on time, but you're quiet. So thank you for that. <laughs> Welcome everyone. And thank you so much for joining um, this incredibly special evening. I'm Lisa McGovern, um, the spouse of Congressman Jim McGovern. And we have a great impact program tonight. So I'm gonna keep my comments brief. You'll be happy to know. For the past 20 years, I have had the honor of serving as the executive director of the Congressional Families Cancer Prevention Program of the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Ordinarily, I would begin by talking about this unique program, the tools we offer, and the members and spouses that make it so impactful. But tonight, you will hear about our program directly from a sampling of members of Congress and congressional spouses and the work they are doing in their home states. We are beyond honored to to that um, First Lady Jill Biden is joining us as part of the bipartisan cancer moonshot to hear about our work and shine a light on the importance of prevention and early detection on the cancer continuum. And tonight we will also present our inaugural Carolyn Bo Aldiger Visionary Award named in honor of our founder. But first, I would like to take a moment to speak about cancer that has touched all of us in some way. As many of you know, in, in 2019, shortly after our 2019 Congressional Families Luncheon, two days after, our daughter Molly was diagnosed with a rare cancer shortly after turning 18 and starting college, and it was devastating. She's been in a clinical trial since March of 2020, the week COVID shut down in, in New York. Um, but I'm happy to report that currently things are stable. And the reason I'm sharing this is because during the past few years, so many people in this room, and I'm looking at all of you, um, members and spouses from both sides of the aisle, people on the Prevent Cancer staff, board members, so many people have embraced our family with love, caring, gestures, and prayers. So I wanted to take a moment to tell you how much it's meant to me and our family and to say thank you for your support and your friendship. <laughs> and thank you as well for being part of this bipartisan community that routinely leaves politics at the door and comes together united to make progress against these terrible diseases. Our vision is for a world where cancer is preventable, detectable, and beatable for all people. Every human being deserves the resources to prevent and fight these diseases, and we at the Prevent Cancer Foundation have always placed health equity as a top priority. Now, before we move on with our program, I have the pleasure of acknowledging our sponsors who make this work possible. I want to thank Bristol-Myers Squibb that has supported us for most of our 32 years, AstraZeneca, Azi, Grail, Garden, Hologic, Oracle, and the National Association of Broadcasters. And thank you to the many senators, members, and congressional spouses who have joined us tonight and work with us throughout the year. I will give each of you a shout out later in the evening, but for now, please know how grateful we are for your support. And I would be remiss if I did not thank our Library of Congress uh, a librarian of Congress, Dr. Carla Hayden, who was supposed to be with us tonight, but unfortunately that was a last minute change. But she and leader Hakeem Jeffries and Democratic Caucus Chair Pete Aguilar arranged for us to use this incredible room that's so rich in a history of hosting bipartisan events. So I wanna thank them and also give a, a special shout out to the hardworking staff of the library that make this the best place in town. Can we give them a round of applause? I also want to recognize a cabinet spouse, Dr. Carolina Reyes, who is here with us tonight with her plus one, Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becer, who is also with us. We are so grateful to you and to the Biden administration for prioritizing our shared interest in advancing cancer prevention and early detection. And thank you to my talented colleagues at the Prevent Cancer Foundation and our board 
who worked tirelessly to advance our mission, especially our senior manager, Cassie Smith, who so expertly and calmly managed the details of tonight's event. And now it's my pleasure to introduce pr our um, Prevent Cancer Foundation's president and CEO, Jody, Jody Hoyos, who leads our team with new direction and energy, building on the 37-year legacy of our visionary founder, Bo Aldiger. Jody. Oops, I gotta fix this just a little. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you for so thoughtfully caring for and developing the Congressional Families Community, um, originally conceived by today's honoree, Representative Matsui. And thank you to Bo. Thank you for your vision, for your hard work to create and steward the foundation for nearly 40 years. Uh, 40 years, yeah. And to the team members and board members carrying out that vision, thank you. It is such an honor to be here in this room with all of you. Each of you work so hard, each in your own way, towards our shared goals of reducing cancer deaths and increasing the, uh, the, the outcomes for people with <clears throat> diagnosed with cancer and their families. Earlier this year, the Prevent Cancer Foundation released a revitalized vision statement. And Lisa mentioned it earlier. It's a world where cancer is preventable, detectable, and beatable for all. Early detection is a critical component of that world because early detection equals better outcomes. For most people, they don't experience signs or symptoms of cancer until it's in its advanced stages. But with routine screening, we can detect cancer earlier before signs and symptoms appear, when treatment can be more effective, when there are more treatment options available, and the chances of survival are much better. Early detection gives us the ability to take the power from cancer and give it to people. Unfortunately, right now, the screening rates in the United States are far too low. In order for us to capitalize on what we know works and give that power back to people, each of us needs to be an ambassador for routine screening. So when people realize the benefits of early detection and the importance of it, they are far more likely to get screened. But none of us can do that alone. And the good news is that we don't have to. Today we celebrate working together. We need partnerships that not only extend between the aisles, but between lawmakers and community members, between scientists and patient advocates. It's a powerful network, sharing information, encouraging investment from every sector, and ushering in a new era of innovation. It is an honor to be one voice amongst many, fighting together to end cancer as we know it. Thank you for your voice and thank you for being here. I just want to say there's a few seats up here if anybody's getting weary already. Um, okay, so thank you, Jody, so much. Um, we're so grateful for your steady and strong leadership. And now it is my pleasure to introduce one of the OG congressional spouses who was a leader with the congressional families um, when the program was created and has continued to be a prevention champion as a member of Congress, co chairing the um, the Cancer Prevention Caucus, my dear friend, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. Before I do what I'm supposed to do, I want to thank Lisa for her leadership, her energy, her support, her compassion, and for keeping this organization alive and ongoing and the vision and everything you do. You inspire us and we love you. And she's got a great spouse. Who's, uh, he's here someplace. He's always there. But I am glad to see so many friends here. 
And before I do what I'm supposed to do, I'm also going to make sure you acknowledge Doris's husband, Roger, who's in the front row. You're a great spouse, too. But now I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, which is to reflect on the beginnings of this unique bipartisan Congressional Families Program and celebrate my friends of many years. We're not old, but we're seasoned. We've been around, and we've done a lot together because of their leadership. As many of you know, Doris and I were congressional spouses in 1991, and Doris was president of the Congressional Club at the time, which, to be honest, was a social club then. I mean, spouses lived here. It was a very different organization. You all are still doing great work, but it was, it was a very different time. Spouses didn't work in those days. I mean, we were the oddity of being working spouses. Doris wanted to build a lasting service component, something that would unite spouses on both sides of the aisle, which we need a lot more now than we needed back then, and make the most of the unique platforms that we have and, visibil and the visibility that we have, a cause that we could all bring passion to. And she decided, I mean, we all did, but it was Doris's vision on cancer awareness and prevention. I'm gonna let Doris talk more about how she and Bo connected while I focus on the leadership that Doris showed way back then, long before she became a member of Congress. Doris has always been committed to public service and finding the common ground that brings people together, even though they have different viewpoints. She recognized the potential that focusing on cancer, that as Lisa's talked about and all of us talked about, touches on too many of us, almost every of us. It touches every family. And the potential it had to unite us while also serving the country. And she was right. 32 years later, the program is bigger and stronger than ever. Opportunities to educate the public have exploded with social media, and congressional spouses continue to build bipartisan relationships over the shared desire to spare families from hearing those dreaded words, you have cancer. So Doris, please join me to accept the inaugural Carolyn Bow Aldige Visionary Award for your trailblazing work in creating this wonderful program, but for being such a good friend to all of us, and to know the difference you've made in many people's lives. Thank you very much, Debbie. Yes, we have been friends for a very long time. Well, you know, but good, yeah. good and seasoned. Uh, and I remember when I first met Debbie, I think it was at the Kennedy Center, she wasn't married to John yet. And she sat right in front of me, and we were at a ballet, which I was surprised that John Dingo was at. <laughs> but Debbie was there, and she loved ballet. So we knew that was a wonderful match, if you can convince John Dingo to go to the ballet. <laughs> but let me just say, um, Debbie was really right about where congressional spouses were 32 years ago or so. I was president, uh, I guess in 1990, became president in 1990. And let me just say that when I became president of the Congressional Club, which is an old club, and like over 100 years old now. And at that time, it served a purpose through the years and a lot of spouses got to know each other, and it was very social, and friendship was really very important, as it is now, too. But it was mostly around teas and lunches and things like that, which we still love, but it can't be the only thing. And so uh, when I became president, I looked around, and I saw these amazing spouses. And at that time, it was all women. I can't be honest with you there. But honestly, there were so many of us and I thought, you know, all of these women are so talented, and they can do so many things. They have a unique platform. And the Congressional Club, being non-political, bipartisan, 
politics stopped at the front door, I thought it was an opportunity to bring us together around some special project or some special interest that all of us can participate in. And at that time, the late 80s, early 90s, breast cancer was something that was really feared. I mean, I'm not saying that there's no fear now, but at least we understand what we could do. At that time, each of us had family friends or in the family itself who had breast cancer or even more just a fear of breast cancer. So with conversations, we decided that that might be a good way to go. And I really felt that it was more purposeful. And for most congressional spouses, some lived here and then some live in the district. There would be a greater connection, not only with each other, but also with their community. And I also felt that gave them a, more of a working connection with their members also. So, you know, this was kind of a dream, uh, and we had to figure out how to do this. We knew we couldn't do it on our own. And so I happened to, a friend of mine introduced me to Bo Alger, who had the Prevent Cancer Foundation that she founded because her father had become ill with cancer. And she really felt it can't be this way all the time. We joined up, and with her expertise, we followed this dream. And it was a dream because I know that, you know, for all of us to have something like this that connects all of us together was so important. And I wanted the Congressional Club to be known for something else other than social activities. So we decided to do an awareness campaign because you have to have awareness first and then d decide to do something where we actually help congressional spouses put together packets. We provided materials, right? And we really had an action plan. And it took a while because people would say, why do you want to do this? And we reminded everybody that this is an opportunity, particularly as we talked about what was happening with cancer. Breast cancer was one of the things that women could really understand. And since women, for the most part, took care of the health of their families, not even thinking about themselves a lot, we felt that was a good place to start. And so we did. And it was really, truly remarkable because as we went about this, we brought in so many people who became our partners. So we talk about public service announcements, the newspapers, op-eds, and also the fact that we we're able to connect with the providers because we also need, needed to do something, have an action plan. We had to have awareness. We also had to take some action. We had to look to see how we actually go out there and if people understand what to do. So mammograms. We partnered with the hospitals, community centers, advocacy groups, and we let each congressional spouse in their own district decide, since they knew their district more than anybody else, how to approach this. So maybe one district had more community centers, others had more hospitals, Others had advocacy groups that go out to the communities. And we want to focus particularly on women, low-income women, who really don't really get the attention they needed and usually just thought about their families. And so what we did was partner with the advocacy groups and the providers to really get mammogram screening going. And that was so important. And I think the impact of it was wonderful for the spouses, the members, but also for the communities. And that to me was so important. And I, I really didn't realize, or even dream, that 
to be 30 years later, and it's, it's broadened so much. Breast cancer, colorectal cancer, prostate, you know, everything, because cancer is everywhere, and we have to focus on, you know, making sure that we can actually have screenings, understand this early detection is so critical, as Debbie and Lisa mentioned. Because with that, we have hope. We have the ability to perhaps cut cancer in its tracks for some people and also learn a lot about prevention. Prevention is so critical. I think all of you would rather prevent something bad from happening than have to go through it and have to figure out what to do with it. And that's why Bo was really so remarkable also because you know, she dealt not just on trying to, you know, focus on just trying to fix it afterwards, but also on cancer prevention, which the focus today on this wonderful group is on all of that, so that we want to make sure that we're part of understanding research and understanding what we can do as we move forward. And I am so proud. Um, and a little overwhelmed that, you know, 30 odd years later, <laughs> um, that it has come to this wonderful place. And Lisa McGovern, 20 years ago, took off with it and has really made it sustainable. And now everybody knows about this. And I think we're doing a great service. And that's what we want to do. And this is going to continue with even more partners, more people out there are going to understand this. Congressional spouses own this. I want you to know you own it. And I think this is such a special gift that you can give to um, your districts and really to all the communities and really this country too because we are going to eventually get to the point where cancer will not be something that we fear. We'll know what to do with it, to prevent it, and if you get it, early detection, and we're done. We can get it going. And I, I just have to say thank you very much for this wonderful honor. And I couldn't have done it without my partner here, Bo Alger, because we dreamed this together, and we figured out all kinds of things. And I remember one time, when we went to colorectal cancer, she had this big <laughs> colon. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm from Sacramento, and she said, well, you want to take the UC Davis Hospital. That's where it went. So everybody walked through the colon. So, I mean, that's what we did, just to make sure people understood that we were, it doesn't sound serious, but we were very serious and we'll do anything in order to get people involved. So anyway, Zoe, would you, would you come up here, Bo? She is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Love you. I love you. I love you. Anyway. Everybody has already said everything, so I really will just say thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for all you've done for this program. I've really never thought of myself as a visionary. I've thought of myself as more of an action person. When Doris came into my office that day, well, it was dreary, it was cold, it was January, and I thought, what? Congressional spouses? Where's Congress? Where's Capitol? <laughs> anyway, we figured it out, and what I thought was probably the most important thing about the entire program and the entire effort and the entire idea was I knew enough to know about Congress that I knew it was a partisan institution, and I thought if we can create something that is bipartisan, then we will have accomplished something, even if we don't get anything done about cancer, but we've really done a few things about cancer. So I think all in all, um, we've had an impact, and this is the visionary. It was her idea. But thank you very much for naming this award for me. I appreciate it so much, and um, I look forward to the next 32 years. Thank you.
Well, thank you so much, Bo. I hate to ever disagree with you, but you are a visionary because you talked about prevention when nobody was talking about prevention. People talked about cancer and they talked about management or they talked about you know, treatment, but they did not talk about prevention. So that is why you are a visionary. And now it's much more included in many conversations, not every conversation, but many conversations, but you were about 37 years ahead of everybody else, so you are the visionary. I just want to recognize two more people, and then we're going to take a quick break. But I want to recognize Barbara Morse Lent, who's um, sitting here, who was one of also one of the OGs, and and Betty and Tanner, who's now taking a picture, but she should be being recognized. These were also two of the original um, congressional spouses, and they're here with us tonight. And Barbara and I are um, we're a bipartisan team that works on so many things. She's been a mentor to me, so I just want to give you a shout out to and thank you. Okay, so um, we are just going to take a quick break, um, and the, the whole, there's going to be a hold on the room for a few minutes while we um, greet the First Lady and bring her in. So if I can invite everybody to maybe have a drink or a little bite to eat, and we're going to see you in about five to ten minutes. Sound good? Great, thanks. Um, so thank you so much for your patience, um, and we are extremely excited to hear from today's speakers about their work around the country to educate the public about cancer prevention and early detection. I'm gonna just ask, um, I'm gonna bring our panelists up and then I'll finish my little brief remarks here. We have Martha Hill from Arkansas, Mary Himes from Connecticut, Leanne Johnson from Ohio, the First Lady of the United States of America, Dr. Jill Biden, and Charlie Capito from West Virginia. Who's, whose remarks are these? Okay. Um, somebody left their remarks. That's why I'm a little just confused up here. Um, so we're excited to hear from our speakers today. Um, and their work around the country to educate the public about cancer prevention and early detection to bring about better outcomes, and especially from our special guest, Dr. Uh, First Lady Jill Biden, who is with us as part of the Cancer Moonshot. Our Congressional Families Program honored Dr. Biden in 2000 with the Congressional Leadership Award for her breast cancer prevention work in Delaware where as, a as a Senate spouse. Since then, she has continued to use her voice and platform and is a role model for us all. It is now my honor to welcome a few members from our bipartisan, bicameral Congressional Families community to share a little bit about their work with the Congressional Families Prevention Program to address the needs in their state districts and states and collectively nationwide. Our first speaker, Representative Nikema Williams of Georgia, along with her amazing husband, Leslie Small, began working with us immediately upon being sworn in in 2021. Thank you, Representative Williams, and the podium is now yours. Good evening, everyone. I'm Congresswoman Nakima Williams, and I'm the spouse of Mr. Leslie Small. And it is an honor to be in the room with so many of you tonight who are fighting for the same thing that I'm fighting for every day. Thank you so much, Dr. Biden, for everything that you do every day for our families. Thank you to Lisa McGovern for uplifting our congressional spouses. My husband, who does not like to talk to anyone, y'all, Lisa pulls him out of his shell and he is ready to lead the charge. And thank you to everyone here tonight who's willing to put it all on the line for early detection. Y'all, my mama was 46 years old when she was diagnosed with an aggressive young onset colorectal cancer. It was stage four at the time, and they weren't recommending screenings until you were age 50. If insurance companies or her doctors would have recommended or covered early screening, there's a good chance that doctors would have caught it in time, and my mama would still be celebrating more birthdays with us today. Looking across this room, I know that my story isn't unique. Each of us is in this room and we know someone who would have benefited from early detection. Colonoscopies at a younger age, mammograms that cover dense breast tissue, 
blood tests that check for various types of cancers. And that's why I take every opportunity to uplift my mama's story and the urgent need for early detection. Working with the Congressional Families Program, I published an op-ed op sharing her story back in 2021. Any and every chance that I have to talk about screenings, I make it a priority. In fact, just next month, I'll be recording a cancer screening public service announcement with the National Bro Association of Broadcasters just before I go in for my annual colonoscopy. And by the way, if you missed your screening during the pandemic, it's not too late to get that screening back on the books because early detection saved lives. Everyone in this room has a powerful platform and we can literally save lives by using it. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in my home state of Georgia and across the country. Black Americans face the highest death rates of any racial or ethnic group for most cancers. Although this is a cause that brings us together, it's important for me to get y'all to recognize the additional barriers that the black community faces in getting access to care in spite of how much money we raise and how much awareness we bring to light. So what do we do? With President Biden's cancer moonshot, we could close gaps in cancer screening so more families can celebrate more birthdays and share more moments together. All Congress needs to do is come together and fund the cancer moonshot. Y'all, cancer doesn't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican or an independent, so we can't let those titles interfere with our work to beat it. Tonight, I wanna challenge all of my colleagues to our, and our fellow spouses to lead by example by coming together like we've done with the Congressional Families Cancer Prevention Program. Together, Congress can increase the public's understanding of cancer prevention and early detection and prevention of cancer, making it a priority. Because y'all, a world with less cancer is a world with more birthdays. Thank you. Hi, I'm Leanne Johnson, and I live in a little town called Marietta, Ohio, right on the Ohio River. When I first joined this family, and we are a family, we are very close and we work hard uh, to get the message out there to ha tell our friends, tell our family, tell our communities to be screened for all different types of cancer. Dr. Biden, thank you for being here. This is such an important cause. Lisa came to Ohio a few years ago and we did um, kind of a whirlwind tour of our cancer uh, center in Marietta and we had a health fair. And when you have a health fair, you just don't know who's gonna show up. Well, the community showed up and we provided free cancer screenings to them. It's so very important. But during that um, visit, Lisa, was when I learned that more and more cancers were showing positive for HPV. I'm a dental hygienist and I do an oral cancer, cancer screening on every one of my patients. But now I have changed the way I deliver that, especially to parents. We have to encourage all parents to have their children vaccinated for HPV. It is preventable. In October of last year, I lost a dear friend. He was a dentist and he found a lump in the back of his neck and sure enough, it was HPV. He didn't live very long. He had a very hard struggle and a battle but he was not in that demographic, he was not in that age group to be vaccinated. So I encourage all of you, number one, your hygienist should be doing oral cancer screenings on you every time you have your teeth cleaned. And number two, tell your family, tell your children to have their children vaccinated for HPV. Thank you, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. everyone, my name's Mary Himes. I'm uh, married to Congressman Jim Himes. We're from Connecticut. And I'm delighted to be here with all of you and thank you, Dr. Biden, for being here. In June of 2021, I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. I completed my treatment um, last September um, and I'm incredibly grateful to the team at the Stanford Hospital's Bennett Cancer Center for just the amazing care that they gave me. And I'm just I'm really grateful that I had that kind of excellent care. I know everybody doesn't have it. 
I never thought I would be one of those women who gets breast cancer. One in eight women in this country are diagnosed every year. I had delayed my mammogram uh, because of COVID concerns. And I guess I was really lucky because I found my lump in my breast myself. You know, I um, was awake in the middle of the night, uh, tossing and turning, and I'm not generally grateful for menopause, but I guess in this case, <laughs> it woke me up. And um, as I tossed and turned, I repositioned myself and I felt a lump, and it was terrifying. Um, my treatment was really long and it was really hard, and I wanna help women avoid that at all costs. Um, right now I'm focusing on promoting key prevention methods, so many of which are simple. Um, and I'm also working on creating art workshops to help children and women get through the treatments. That was the one thing that really, other than my family and friends and the love that I felt, making art was really what got me through the chemo and the radiation and the surgery and the immunotherapy. Thanks to the Congressional Family Cancer Prevention Program, I've used my public platform to write some op-eds. I did a TV interview, that was really scary. Um, and I've posted uh, a video um, just telling my story. And the story has encouraged women to get their annual mammograms and also to do the monthly self-exams, which honestly I never did. Um, but it's so easy and it helps you catch or find the, the cancer earlier. And I've had women come up to me and say, God, you know, thank you so much for sharing your story. I, I scheduled my mammogram. So I know that what we're doing with awareness works. It is saving lives. And I'm just so um, grateful and happy to be involved in this effort, effort with you all. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Martha Hill from Little Rock, Arkansas. And I'm gonna tell a little different story. I wanna thank the Prevent Cancer Foundation for what they're doing because early detection and prevention is where we all need to be uh, in our journey on, in cancer. So about six years ago, a group of women gathered together and we started, I guess, a thing in Arkansas and we decided, it was a group of women legislators, and we decided that we would help launch um, the National Cancer Institute status program for our university, um, University of Arkansas Medical Science Center. So after a 100% bipartisan vote backing it and some funding, we've had, every two years, we've had continual uh, votes in our legislature. I'm very happy to say that just about three weeks ago, $100 million was set aside by our governor and our legislator work, working together, and our governor, who is a cancer survivor, to help us get over um, the goal line with our NCI designation application. It is a big, big thing. There's no National Cancer Institute designated um, center in a three-state area. So if you get cancer in Arkansas, you have to travel to Houston. You have to travel to Oklahoma City. You have to travel to Dallas to get comprehensive care. This is a big thing, particularly for rural Arkansans that have to leave their homes and that sort of thing. Incidence of, of cancer in along the Mississippi River is just not to be believed. It's colorectal cancer and lung cancer. And the minority populations in those areas are hit particularly hard. So prevention is what it's all about. NCI designation will allow us to have um, much better clinical trials and it will allow us to prevent and get ahead of this insidious disease. So that is our story. We're so excited about it. We've got about two more years. COVID kind of stopped us a little bit along our journey, but we've got the money set aside and we are going for it. 
and Little Rock will be a wonderful, wonderful um, home for an NC. We look forward to Little Rock being a wonderful home for the uh, NCI designated cancer center. So thank the Prevent, uh, the Prevent Cancer Foundation for allowing this Arkansan to tell the story. And we look forward to seeing all the NCI folks in Little Rock really soon. And um, Dr. Biden, thank you for helping us. Well, I'll put my thanks in to prevent cancer, and Lisa specifically, like, I'm a participant in this program, but the program you've put together here has inspired me to want to do more. So, you know, I'm going to take away more than I came with, so thank you. Um, I, too, am passionate uh, about fighting this disease. My name is Charles Capito. I'm the spouse of uh, Shelley Moore Capito of West Virginia. Um, but we're all passionate about this. I think at one level or another, it, it's about the prevention, it's about the detection, it's about the treatment, and of course, someday it's about the cure. And like so many, it's very personal for me. I lost a grandmother I never knew, and both my mother and my father's lives ended way, way too soon, both from cancer. So last fall, when I heard from Lisa, I was more than happy to cut a short video discussing the importance of lung cancer screening. I have no idea how many people have seen that video. Maybe my family. Um, <laughs> but here's what I do know. My home state of West Virginia has some pretty bad lung cancer numbers, including being number second Number two, I'm sorry, in lung cancer mortality. And lung cancer remains the leading cause of death for men and women in the U.S. But early screening can save lives, and early screening does save lives. So if my little contribution compelled one West Virginian into action, maybe we made a difference, and maybe we made a difference in that West Virginia family. And there's another thing that I do know. Our chances are a lot better if we do these things than if we don't do these things. Albert Einstein is credited with saying, an example is not the main means of influencing people. It is the only means. It's one of my favorite quotes about leadership. Our First Lady is a fantastic example of what Mr. Einstein was describing. I first met our First Lady at a luncheon she hosted at the Naval Observatory many years ago, and I had the good fortune of being seated next to her. I immediately found myself at ease. She could not have been more gracious, more pleasant, and I came away with a decision. I said, Jill Biden is the real deal. It, and so, and here's what I mean by that expression. She is genuine, she is authentic, and she's worthy. Her long history of work and devotion in fighting this disease is well known and well documented. We appreciate it immensely, and we appreciate it what she does and continues to do for our group and for our nation in general. And of course, it's all headlined by the cancer moonshot. Other examples of the First Lady's leadership are her devotion to family, her devotion to education, and her devotion to her students. So it is my great honor and an immense personal pleasure to welcome our First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, to the podium. Thank you. Oh, please sit. Thank you, Charlie. And it's wonderful to be here. Secretary. Thank you. <laughs> and
and Secretary Becerra and Carolina. It's wonderful to be back with you and this fantastic community of congressional spouses. And I can't believe, Lisa, that it was, two, gosh, 2000 that, um, that I was honored by this, by this group. I mean, it's, when I came in, I said it seemed like 100 years ago, but my gosh, it almost was. And um, <laughs> so, and Doris and Debbie and Bo, thank you for your decades of leadership. Lisa, yes. And Lisa and Jody, I'm grateful for your invitation to join today and discuss an issue that really is close to our hearts. And to all of you who shared your stories with us, thank you for putting your heart and hard work into this cause. And um, because it's hard. It's hard to tell the stories, and I really appreciate your sharing because I know they come from the heart. In the last two years, I've joined so many of you um, at the Congressional Club Spouses Luncheon, right, Patty? <laughs> and I've talked about learning to navigate the unique role of being a political spouse. And I promised myself that I would never waste the platform that I was given. And many of you know that challenge well. But looking at this crowd of accomplished and diverse leaders from across our country, I'm thinking not of the power of one voice, but of many. And last month, I visited New Orleans to tour the Louisiana Cancer Research Center with Senator and Dr. Cassidy. And I learned about the ways their state is coming together across party lines to address disparities and save lives. And that includes Dr. Laura Cassidy's efforts to help make breast cancer screenings affordable. <laughs> cancer touches us all. Everyone in this room knows someone who has wrestled with this disease, maybe even lost someone to it. Cancer doesn't care who you vote for. It's not a red issue or a blue issue. It's a human issue. And it takes all of us to stop it. And that's why this event and this organization matter so much. We can collaborate and share good ideas and best practices. Together, we can get the people who need information, get the information and help prevent cancer before it happens and catch it early. And God knows that's the key, catch it early before it does. Here on the Hill, you are setting the course for our future. But you don't have to be elected to make a difference. We all have a role to play, including spouses, because we serve Americans too, don't we? We see their hearts and their hopes. We witness the small miracles of compassion and generosity between neighbors. We know what can happen when communities come together, how much can change when we work together towards a cause that's really bigger than ourselves. Fighting cancer is that cause. And you don't have to do it alone. Joe and I reignited the Biden Cancer Moonshot, our White House initiative to build a world where cancer is not a death sentence, where we help patients and their families navigate this journey, where we stop cancer before it starts, where we can catch it early and people live longer, healthier, happier lives. Because this is personal to us. And we're excited to work with Congress and with everyone here. I've been to so many communities in your states to see how you are saving lives and how we can partner with you in that work. And the people in this room, members of the Congressional Families Cancer Prevention Program, will be your allies too. 
They have so many resources. So if you're looking for more ways to get involved, they can help. Together, through the Biden Cancer Moonshot, we can bridge party lines and state lines to end cancer as we know it. It's ambitious, I know, but it's also within our reach. For Joe and for me, this is the mission of our lives, and we are ready and we are proud to work beside you. Thank you. What an amazing program. I thank the world of every single person on this stage, and I thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Dr. Biden, for your leadership and commitment to ending cancer as we know it through the bipartisan cancer moonshot. We're honored to have you with us today. I now ask that everyone remain seated to allow the First Lady to depart. And let me take take a minute to thank our speakers for not only your remarks today, but what you do throughout the year. So thank you. Oscar music yet. Um, um, let's see. Okay. I also want, in addition to thanking the, hi Jennifer Griffin, I also, our board member, I also want to, um, in addition to thanking these fabulous spouses that are on the stage with us right now, I also want to thank so many um, spouses that are here today and those who are back in their districts who are act active with us throughout the year. Um, and I especially want to thank my dear friend, Patty Garamendi, who is the current president of the Congressional Club and ensures that our work to prevent cancer is the top service priority of the club. Thank you, Patty. Okay, everybody get comfortable because now I'm gonna name the members of Congress who have joined with us today. In addition to our fabulous cabinet secretary and who is the plus one of Carolina Reyes, Dr. Carolina Reyes, here we go. Dr. Jack, I'm sorry, I, oh, it, it, special guest, Speaker Emeriti, Nancy Pelosi. This is a big surprise for me and I'm so touched and honored. Thank you for being here. You, I don't think you've ever missed one of these events, so thank you. Um, I also want to thank, let's see, all right. I'm, I don't know if I have all the cards, so I'm gonna do what I can here. Okay, good. Um, Representative Vincente Gonzalez, John Garamendi, plus one to Patty. Um, Representative Brandon Williams, Representative Rick Larson, Representative Jim McGovern, Representative Doris Matsui, Representative Kwesi Fume, Representative Frank Mervin, Representative Mark Desaulnier, Representative Debbie Dingle, Representative Nakima Williams, Representative Jim Himes, Representative Paul Tonko, Representative Joe Morelli, Representative Joaquin Castro, Representative Ed Case, Representative Jack Berman. If I don't have your card, it's because they haven't come up. <laughs> Representative and dear friend, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Who else am I missing? Rick Representative Rick Larson. Representative Bill Johnson, plus one to Leanne Johnson. Rep who is it? Representative Angie Craig and Representative, and, and um, her, her, her spouse, yes, it's plus one to um, Cheryl Green, who, who's also done one of our videos. Who else have I missed? All right, last call. 
Closing, closing, all right. That's, oh, and, 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 and congressional families member Rebecca Schultz. Um, anyway, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight and for your work year round. Tomorrow, um, we will wake up renewed and ready to continue our work together. But tonight, for the rest of the evening, I want you to please relax and enjoy each other and spend a little time. And um, we'll do this again in September. Thank you so much. <laughs>